particle of unit mass moves in a straight line against a resistance numerically equal to v plus v cubed, where v is its velocity. Initially, the particle is at the origin and is travelling with velocity q, and q is greater than zero. Part A. Show that the velocity is related to the displacement by the formula x equals the inverse tan of q minus v over 1 plus qv. Part B. Show that the elapsed time when the particle is travelling with velocity v is given by t equals a half log of q squared into 1 plus v squared over v squared into 1 plus q squared. Part C. Find v squared as a function of t. And part D. Find the limiting value of v and x as t approaches infinity. So for part A. Let's get a diagram drawn. A particle moves in a straight line, so it's moving in a straight line. Let's define this as our positive direction of motion. And it is going against a resistance numerically equal to v plus v cubed. So here's my particle, and it has a resistance in the opposite direction to the direction of motion, because it's a resistance, and it's equal to v plus v cubed. All right, so Newton's law says that the sum of forces should be equal to mass times acceleration. Now, what are the forces? Well, there's only one force here. That's the resisting force. It's in the opposite direction to the direction of positive motion. So it's negative into V plus V cubed. And that's equal to mass times acceleration. But what's mass? Well, we're told that we have a unit mass. A unit mass means that it has a value of 1. So, 1 times acceleration is just acceleration. Okay, and in the question, what do we have? We have x in terms of v. So, our expression for a is going to be v dv dx. Because we want to involve x and v. And that's equal to v plus v cubed. Okay, if I divide by... Uh, or not divide, bring this dx up here and this v plus v cubed down here, I will get negative dx equal to v on v plus v cubed dv. This is obviously just 1 on 1 plus v squared dv. This is negative dx. And now I can integrate both sides. On this side I'll get negative x. And here I'll get tan inverse of v. And I have a constant plus c. Now I need to determine what this constant is. And the way to do that, we look at the initial conditions. So it says that initially the particle is at the origin and is traveling with a velocity q. Oh, you didn't see that. Initially the particle is at the origin traveling with a initial velocity q. So that means when t is 0 x is 0 because it's at the origin, and v is q. So if I sub these in, I get 0 equals tan inverse of v, but v is q, so I should write q, not v, plus c, and therefore c is negative tan inverse of q. Alright, so I sub that back in, and I have negative x equals tan inverse of v minus tan inverse of q. Let's get rid of the negative here and make this tan of inverse q minus tan of inverse v. Now, what do we want? We want x equal to tan inverse of this expression. And the way that we're going to get that is let's consider if we tanned both sides. So tan x would equal tan of tan inverse of this expression, and then the tan and tan inverse will cancel each other out. And so what I'll be left with is tan of x. What I'll be left with in, in here would be uh, tan of x equals q minus v over 1 plus qv. So if I took tan x, that would be equal to what? That would be equal to tan of tan inverse q minus tan inverse v. So, how can I simplify this expression? Well, if you remember back to your three-unit 
uh, trigonometry, you will remember that tan of a minus b is equal to tan of a minus tan of b divided by 1 plus tan of a times tan of b. And so I'm going to apply this principle here to this expression, where tan inverse q is a and tan inverse v is b. So, so we should just write here recalling. Alright, so continuing on from this line now, that means tan of x is going to be tan of tan inverse q minus tan of tan inverse v divided by 1 plus tan of tan inverse q times tan of tan inverse, uh, not v, not b, it should be v. So now I can see that the tans and tan inverses, well they're inverse functions, so they cancel each other out. So that's going to be q minus v over 1 plus qv. And that's what tan of x equals, and so all that's left is I take the inverse tan of both sides, and I get what I was looking for. Q minus V over 1 plus QV. Just moving that away. And that's my final answer. Now part B, let's see what part B wanted us to do. It wants us to show that the elapsed time when the particle is traveling with a velocity V is given by this. So in other words, they want us to just relate time to velocity. Okay, so we're going to go back to, where is it, this formula here, and instead of using v dv dx, we're just going to use dv dt, because that's the way that we'll involve v and t. So, let's just write this bit here, equal to a, and so therefore, negative v plus v cubed equals dv on dt. Alright, bringing that dt up, and let's keep the, the negative with the v's, I think that'll be better, over v plus v cubed dv. And then I want to integrate both sides here. Move that away. Integrate both sides. Alright, the left hand side is really obvious, it's just t. Now the right hand side is not so obvious. We're going to have to use the method of partial fractions here. So this is going to be the integral. Now this will be negative 1 over v into 1 plus v squared dv. Now I'm not going to actually show the full process of decomposing this into uh, partial fractions because that might take a while. I mean this video is already going to be long enough as it is so I will just assume that you know how to do partial fractions. Hopefully by the time you get up to the mechanics part of the course you will have covered the integration part of the course. So this is going to be equal to negative 1 on v plus v on v squared plus 1. And let's just double check that. If I multiply that, I'll have negative v squared minus 1, and then I have v squared, and the v squared and negative v squared will cancel. I'm left with negative v. Good. So you could check that this, you could make a common denominator and check that this is equal to that. Okay. Anyway, continuing on. Integrating is minus the log of v. Here I'm almost at a log again, but I'm just missing the factor of 2. So if I times by a 2 and put a half out the front, I'll have a half log of the denominator v squared plus 1. That's t. And of course I need to put my constant in, and I'll call it k, because in the previous part I used c. Okay, and again I'll use my initial conditions. When t equals 0, v equals q. So therefore, 0 equals negative log of q plus a half log of q squared plus 1 plus k. So therefore, k equals log of q plus a half log of q squared plus 1. Oh, that should be a negative because I've brought it to the other side. Okay, so let's write what t is equal to. 
t is equal to this, negative log v, plus a half log of v squared plus 1, plus k, which is log of q, minus a half log of q squared plus 1. All right, now, I want to combine this. If I look back at what I initially wanted, I want everything inside the one log, and there's going to be a half out the front. So, all the terms that don't have a, a half out the front, which are these two, log of q and negative log of v, I'm going to add a half out the front. So that will be negative a half log. And to compensate for that, by using the power rule of logs, I can make this a squared. Because if I bring down the power, that will cancel out this half. And I'll do the same thing for log of v squared. Plus, uh, sorry, log of q. I'll put a half log of q squared minus, let's fit this onto this one line. And there we have that. And then just combining our logs, because they all have the same coefficient now, I can just put them all into one. The coefficient will be a half. Log of, what are the positive things? v squared plus 1 and q squared. So it's q squared into v squared plus 1. And one of the negatives, it's v squared times q squared plus 1. And that's our expression for t which matches with what we wanted. All right, part C. Find v squared as a function of t. So in the previous part, I just worked out t as a function of v squared. So all I'm really required to do now is to rearrange this and have v squared as a function of t. So if t equals a half log q squared into 1 plus v squared v squared into 1 plus q squared. If I multiply out by 2 and then exponentiate, I'll get e to the power 2t equals q squared 1 plus v squared over v squared 1 plus q squared. And remember, I'm looking for v squared as the subject. That's what I'm trying to achieve, an expression for v squared. So let's multiply this up. That's e to the power 2t times v squared into 1 plus q squared equal to q squared into 1 plus v squared. All right, now if I distribute that through, I'll get e to the 2t v squared plus, now is that going to help me? It's not going to help me, so let's not do that. Let's uh, just distribute this through, q squared v squared. And now let's bring this expression over here e to the 2t, v squared, 1 plus q squared, minus q squared, v squared, and that will be equal to q squared. Okay, factoring out v squared here, I'll have e to the 2t into 1 plus q squared, minus q squared, equals q squared, and so therefore v squared equals q squared dividing by this expression, e to the 2t, 1 plus q squared minus q squared. And there is my expression for v squared as a function of t. Now for part d, which asked us to do what? Find the limiting value of v and x as t approaches infinity. So, I can move this away now. As t approaches infinity, well, let's have a look what happens. v squared is going to be the limit, as t approaches infinity, of q squared over e to the 2t, 1 plus q squared, minus q squared. Now, there's only one term in this expression that's affected by t, so if I substitute very large values of t in, the exponential will become even larger than that because exponential rises very quickly. So my denominator is going to approach infinity, and so my entire fraction is going to approach zero. So v squared will be zero, which means that v goes to zero. And what about for x? Because we needed to find the limiting value of x as t approaches infinity as well. Well, let's go back to part one. 
part A, where we found that x equals 10 inverse of q minus v over 1 plus qv. So let's just write that down. x equals 10 inverse of q minus v over 1 plus qv. So, we don't have an expression for x in terms of t, but we do have an expression for x in terms of v. We know that as t approaches infinity, v is going to approach at 0. So, as t approaches infinity, v approaches 0, and so x is going to be the limit as v goes to 0 of this expression here. As v goes to 0 of 10 inverse q minus v on 1 plus qv. Substituting v equals 0 into this gives me 10 inverse of q. This becomes 0, so minus 0 on 1 plus 0, which in turn is q. 10 inverse of q. So x will approach and become 10 inverse of q as t approaches infinity. And these are our limiting values, v equals 0 and x equals 10 inverse of q. And we finish the question.